Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 51st Philippine Mining Club Luncheon. Our supporting partners. Uh, all eight sakes, and today we've got David Stewart, their uh, representative from Jakarta. David, if you would mind standing up, please, show everyone where you are. Dave's down there, give him a round of applause. Thank you, David. And Drill Corp, I'm not sure if Ken Wilkes has arrived yet. Ken, are you here? Not yet. Okay, auto check. Uh, Lawrence, you here, Lawrence? They're all running a bit late. Might have been that weather out there, I guess. Intertech, uh, represented by Becky. I'm not sure if Becky's here as well. Moving on, Kazar. Uh, they're represented today by uh, Paul John Al Alcantara, I believe. You can stand up, please. Give a round of applause. Thank you very much. They're also donated some of the raffle prizes today. Also, Lion X is uh, Christoph here. Christoph, there he is. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, Index aren't here today, but uh, they've, they've been, they're, they're helping with their supporting partnerships. The Resource Comms out of Melbourne and Ollie Consulting, which is represented today by Leah Dominguez, their principal. Our foundation partners, Weir Minerals, Mike Akara, the country manager. Mike, could you stand up, please? Give Mike a big round of applause. <laughs> Weir's been um, a foundation partner for many years, and we, we, we appreciate their um, their help. Uh, John Cuthbertson from David Brown, Santa Solo. Dave, uh, John, are you here, John? Stand up, please. Thanks, John. And I believe we've also got their uh, Asia-Pacific manager, Bill Stevens. Bill, could you please stand up? Thank you, Bill. There he is. Thanks, Bill. BF Metals, Kilby, did, are you here yet, Kilby? Uh, Kilby, can you stand up? One and only Kilby. Come on, Kilby Ramos. Thank you, Kilby. <laughs> BF Metals. And site work ready. Unfortunately, uh, Brett McVie can't be with us today. Moving on to our principal partners, um, Oztai, Gerard has had to rush off to Indonesia. They've had a machinery breakdown. Not a reflection on their company, though. Oztai Geophysical Consultants. Advice and guidance for uh, geophysical exploration programs being carried out in the mining and metal sector, as well as the coal sector. Oztai Geophysical Consultants also provide a wide range of services to the environmental, groundwater, and engineering industries. And as I said, Gerard's not with us today. QED, Quest Exploration Drilling, Asia's leading exploration drilling company with modern equipment, well-trained staff, has elevated QED to become the benchmark for international standard drilling operations in terrain that is generally typified by logistical constraints, geological complexity and topographical extremes. Alan's not with us, but I believe uh, Ramon Santiago. Ramon, are you here? Can you set up, Ramon? Ramon's our executive director, and Renato, you here, the commercial manager. There he is, you can see out too, Renato. Thank you very much. And we appreciate the help from QED. The GHD, GHD has had a permanent presence in the Philippines since 1998, with over 600 professional staff spread across three cities in the Philippines. Um, that is their main office in Makati, and their two branches now in Cebu City and Quezon City. Uh, focused on creating lasting community benefit, GHD leverages on its connected global network of 10,000 employees to provide engineering and environmental management services to key players in the energy and resources sector. And they're represented today by Manny Achetta. Manny, can you stand up please? Manny, everyone knows Manny. Manny's their technical director uh, for mining and civil. Our uh, industry partners, um, I'd like to thank TVI. TVI, can you stand up? They're all, where are you, TVI? Just put your hands up and wave. There they are, TVI's here. Thank you very much, TVI. Um, Oceana Gold, represented by Brad Norman here today. Brad, down there, put down the front here. And Bezant Resources. The, the club is affiliated with um, the uh, prestigious Melbourne Mining Club, the globally recognised Melbourne Mining Club. Members of um, the Philippine Mining and Exploration Association, PMEA. I'd just like to add that uh, if you haven't been to PMEA, it's a, it's a great association to be a member of if you're in the resources sector. Uh, Gurley is down the back there. They've got a table down the back there. And Gurley's got their application form for membership. Very reasonable membership uh, 
fees for uh, PMEA. And ASCAN, the Australian New Zealand Chamber of Commerce, uh, very large resources advocacy with the Chamber. Let's go back to one. Go back to. I'd just like to mention our media partner, Philippine Resources Journal. Their principal, Matt Brimble, is in the audience today. Matt, if you can just stand up. There he is down the back. G'day, Matt. Uh, the magazines are on the table, so feel free to. We're a bit short of magazines today, so if you want some more, let us know and we can arrange to get them to you. Uh, you'll notice on your table some very important pieces of paper, and they are very important pieces of paper. One of them is about the, the Mining Club's marketing partnerships. If you'd like to get involved in uh, helping the Mining Club exist, the Mining Club is into its ninth year now in a sector which is, as you know, uh, up and down and probably down at the moment. But as you can see by the audience here, there's still plenty of interest in it. You'll also see a mining club feedback form. Appreciate it if you wouldn't mind. Um, if you get time, there's pencils on the table. You can just scribble down your what you think's good about us and what you don't think's good about us. Feel free to say that uh, Kevin's a bad uh, compare. That's fine by me, but I'll still be here the next time. Uh, but feel free to have a look at those. Also, there is a, uh, another flyer called Mining Towards 2030 on your, your table, which uh, we'll have somebody talk about a bit later on. Also, the Chamber of Mines has got their table down there. Of course, Mining Philippines 2019, the biggest mining uh, resources event of the year, is happening in September on 10 and 12. Leo will say more about that. Uh, Jocelyn's manning their table down there. So feel free to go down there and and have a look at their, uh, their flyer for Mining 2013 and also they've got their registration form there if you'd like to be a delegate, an exhibitor. Uh, this is the Mining Resources Conference to be at in the Philippines every year. If you want to know what's going on in this industry, where we're headed and um, how everyone's trying to get it uh, uh, off the round and going again, this is the one to be at. Okay. A uh, recognised figure and friend of the Philippine mining industry, Leo Dominguez, is a man of many talents and responsibilities and we all know that. Anybody who knows Leo knows that. A lawyer by training, Leo was previously a partner of Kusumbing Torres, a member firm of Baker McKenzie International, where he headed its uh, energy, mining and infrastructure practice group. In the course of his career, Leo has acted on behalf of the mining metals company in respect to their projects, operations located in the Philippines. Uh, from exploration permits, uh, mineral production sharing agreements, MPSAs, financial and technical assistance agreements, FTAs, joint ventures. He's also co-author of a bill that eventually became the Philippine Mining Act in 1995. He's an active member of the legal committee of the Chamber of Mines of the Philippines. Leo also has served as a legal advisor to the Philippine Mine Safety and Environment Association, PMCA. By the way, Leo wears a size large shirt, he's got a 28 inch waist and has a cat named Pusser. Ladies and gentlemen, could I welcome to the stage Leo Dominguez. Well ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to get to meet our, our uh, future cadets of the mining industry because uh, we have a, uh, an opportunity after, the, after this event for, uh, to get to meet them over a drink. Uh, we are happy to say that the Philippine Mining Club has been indirectly responsible for the hiring of uh, at least four of these young cadets. At this point, I'd like to call on Mr. Roger Dimo to the stage to please talk to us about a two-day workshop. I would like to speak shortly mining towards 2000. First of all, this is a conference. This is a conference about the future of mining. Now, what does that mean? Um, essentially, it's going to talk about the, the future of mining in the context of digital mining. Now, this uh, seminar, uh, which, by the way, is going to be held on October 8th to 9th, uh, it will be given by Dr. Kash Sirinanda, who is a 
uh, a Sri Lankan uh, who has a PhD from Melbourne University and is a known uh, is a well-known futurist and digital mining expert. Um, if I may, I'll just read to you very quickly uh, part of the foreword. Mining is a global industry and is often located in remote, ecologically sensitive and less developed areas that include many indigenous lands and territories. When managed appropriately, it can create jobs, spur innovation, and bring investment and infrastructure at a game-changing scale over a long time horizon. Yet, if managed poorly, mining can also lead to environmental degradation, displaced populations, inequality, and increased conflict, among other challenges. So, um, if you're interested, you have a brochure on your table. The dates are October 8th for the first session and October 9th for the second. Now, if you have any questions, please talk to Ke either Kevin or I on further details. Thank you very much. I now uh, have the pleasure of uh, introducing uh, the Executive Director of the Chamber of Mines who will give us an industry update, a mining industry update Philippines. In 2011, he joined the Chamber of Mines as its Vice President for Legal and Policy, thereby coming full cir circle. Where he once was the beneficiary of mining, he now seeks to give back to the industry by promoting responsible mining and advocating for equitable, exclusive, and sustainable growth in the countryside. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, and help me welcome attorney Ronnie Residoro. Thank you, Leo, for that generous introduction. Um, and I'd like to thank the organizers, Kevin, for the opportunity uh, to give you um, industry updates from a policy and legal perspective. Okay. Uh, well, since I last uh, spoke to the group in February, there's not been much development on the policy front. Uh, perhaps, the, if, if you were to summarize, only five things happened. Firstly, um, the 17th Congress ended in May without a new fiscal regime for mining being passed. Secondly, um, the end to Endo Act, or the Security of Tenure Act, uh, did not get to become an act. It was vetoed by the president. And third, uh, we have a new fight. Um, several bills have already been filed in the 18th Congress proposing to amend the fiscal regime for mining. And then, perhaps from a, an administrative standpoint, there are new congressional committee chairs that we have to uh, interact with. And then uh, perhaps a short update on Towards Sustainable Mining. This is a global initiative which the Chamber has uh, agreed to embark on in 2017. And then of course, I'd like to invite you to Mining Philippines. Uh, and I guess that's it. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, I hope to see you in Sofitel in September. Thank you. Uh, distinguished guests, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Friends of the Environment and Sustainable Development, it's my pleasure today to introduce somebody who has had such great impact on uh, Mindanao, on the peace process, on our nation, and very few may know this, also has an impact on the environment. Our, you know how, what they say, that in areas of conflict, you find the more pristine environments because the natural resources cannot be developed, right? And our guest today, in the conversations that we've had in the past, has always looked at how to protect the resources, the environment where we have our natural resources in the Bangsamoro, but at the same time benefit 
from development. So he is really a truly interesting speaker for this group today. Our guest speaker is the chief minister of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, uh, Chief Minister Ahod Ibrahim Al Hajj. He is just turned 70. Um, he was the youngest of four. And he spent all his years studying in um, Mindanao. He wanted to be an engineer. And he was a scholar, he was a government scholar. But unfortunately, the armed conflict which started during the Marcos years prevented him from bringing his dream to fruition. Then he became a student and a scholar of war. He was appointed as zone commander of the then Unified Moro National Liberation Front or MNLF with an area of assignment covering 15 municipalities after undergoing milita military training abroad. In 1974, he became the military chairman of the MNLF for the entire Cotabato region, now comprised by the provinces of North Cotabato, Maguindanao, Sultan Kudarat, South Cotabato, and Sarangani where he rose as the Kutawato region's chairman four years uh, after. When the new MNLF leadership under the late Salamat Hashim was created, he was designated as the chairman of the Ad Hoc Coordinating Committee, where he supervised all the activities of the group in the homeland while Salamat Hashim was staying abroad. When the MILF was finally established in 1982, he was appointed as the Vice Chair for Military Affairs and the Chief of Staff of the Bangsamoro Islamic Armed Forces, or the BIAF. Now his diplomatic experience, because this student of war is also a diplomat, Excellencies. He was the personal envoy of the late Salamat Hashim, in diplomatic engagements and dealings with top-level government officials in the Islamic world, the OIC, as well as our own government. He was also the chair of the MILF Peace Panel, a negotiating team with the government of the Philippines, from 2001 to 2003. He has signed, on behalf of the MLF, major peace agreements such as the Tripoli Peace Agreement of 2001. When Sheikh Salamat Hashim passed away in 2003, he succeeded as the chair of the MILF. As the chair of the MILF, he witnessed the signing of the Framework Agreement of the Bangsamoro in 2012 and the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro in 2014 both leading to the creation of the newly established Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, where he serves as the Interim Chief Minister. Ladies and gentlemen and friends, on a personal note, let me just say that the many conversations that we've had with Chief Minister Murad has given those of us who are supportive of peace and supportive of true development and autonomy in Muslim Mindanao, it has given us a bigger zone of confidence in the possibilities of a strong future for the Bangsamoro. He is a scholar of not just war, but is a student of peace, and we are glad that he is now given a chance to implement the vision that is contained in the framework of agreement for the Bangsamoro. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Minister Ibrahim uh, Murad. I am very elated with the introduction and uh, I am also equally elated by the number of uh, participants who are here with the, uh, the, in this uh, forum. Thank you very much for attending. 
uh, to the executive director of uh, the Chamber of Mines of the Philippines, Mr. Ronald S. Uh, uh, Residoro, uh, Mr. Kevin John Lewis, Attorney Leo Dominguez, distinguished CEOs of various mining companies, both here and abroad, uh, members of the diplomatic corps, we have uh, our friends, uh, uh, ambassadors of Australia, ambassadors of New Zealand, ambassadors of the uh, EU, uh, ambassadors uh, uh, of the other countries who are represented here. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, the CEOs also of the various mining companies, both here and abroad, uh, investors, guests, friends of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, uh, and uh, environment fellow uh, workers in the government's students may the peace mercy and blessings of Almighty Allah be with us all Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and good morning it is my privilege and honor to speak to one of the contributors to the development of the Bangsamoro, the Bangsamoro region. Undeniably, the mining industry in general provided opportunities provided opportunities in terms of livelihood and economic progress to the economy, it is expected that the same share of benefit will be accorded to the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. The provisions of Republic Act 11054, particularly Article 13, Section 13, states that Subject to the provisions of the Constitution and national laws, the Bangsamoro government shall have the authority, jurisdiction over exploration, development, and utilization of mines and minerals in the territor territorial jurisdiction. Taking into account and consideration environmental protection and ecological balance. The Bangsamoro government shall have the power to grant permits, licenses, and contracts for the purpose. Relative to that, we have Institu uh, instituted 12 points priority agenda of my administration where we wanted to closely monitor and regulate the operation of mining and other related industries to strictly require them to comply with existing environmental laws and regional policies. For this reason, I have already directed the Minister of Environment and Natural Resources of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao to spearhead the formation of a responsible mining law based on multi-stakeholders, participation and well-informed deliberation. This mining code 
shall address foremost robust development not at the expense of the environment. As we move forward, we wanted to achieve a climate smart region where we can harmonize development with that of ecological balance. Presently, the barn honors existing contracts and agreements entered into by the previous ARMM government. However, in order for the administration to measure the impact of mining industry in the lives of our people, the BARM Minister of Environment and Natural Resources constituted a mining performance audit team, MPAT that will look into the compliance of these mining companies to their commitments both in environmental and social obligations. This mining audit should not be construed to find faults but instead provide avenue for a better free environment through people and responsible mining in the BARM. We have already constituted this group and they are already starting to uh, operate. As we strengthen these mandates, I would like also to assure everyone that the Bank Samoro governments, we must forward, move forward transparency and accountability in all our dealings and transactions in the government. The Bank Samoro people must know where their taxes are going, what programs and projects that will benefit them, and feel that they have a government that look into their welfare. We need to change the system marked by corruption, discontent among our people, and failed governance. As I said it before, and I will say it again, if we cannot do this now, our struggle fails. We consider our entry, entering into the government as part of our struggle, the continuation of our struggle, and uh, we are determined to accomplish the aspiration of the Bangsamoro people. In our new leadership, new systems and forward-looking economy can say that we want new investors and partners to come and be part of these exciting opportunities that are developing in the region. One of our 12 priority agenda for the barn is the exploration of economic potentials, which means that we want to explore and harness economic potentials and comparative advantages to include halal industry, the Liguasan Mars watershed, potential tourist destinations and other natural resources to boost the economic development of the Bangsamoro. Definitely, responsible mining is part of that area which we want to explore. I'm sure that you are interested to hear more our in-depth, our take on private economic activities in the Bangsamoro which would include mining investment, and let me explain our view. I will, I am, we, we are, we would like to use a concept familiar to business. This is the concept of 
bottom line. In any business, the bottom line is essential. The bottom line is usually the net income or profit after the activities and costs have been considered. This is an essential business line and influence a lot of decisions. I know you are very familiar on this. We need to note, however, that the Bank Samoro is not a business. It is our identity as well as our government. Our goal is not private, but to serve the common good. We answer to the millions of people. Using the concept of bottom lines, the question then is this. What are our bottom lines? The most important indicators of Bank Samoro economic success. I say we have four bottom lines and these are people, planet, profit, and purpose. The first bottom line is people. The ultimate goal of our economic development, which would include mining activities, is that it must facilitate full employment, human development, and social justice. The welfare of the people is a crucial bottom line. The second bottom line is our planet. Our economic development must consider ecological balance and make sure that our natural resources are available not just to the present generation but to the future generations. The sustainability of the planet is a bottom line. The third bottom line is profit. Economic activities must also be profitable to the private sector to come in. Without a reasonable return of investment, the Bank Samoro will lose the opportunity to entice and bring in investors which in turn will spark growth in our homeland. Profitability is a bottom line. And we know that our people could only feel the fruit of the peace process when they feel that there is something happening. The fourth bottom line and that which I consider as the most important is purpose. Why do we do the things that we do? What is the purpose? For us, there is a spiritual dimension, a moral dimension to economic development. We have been an oppressed people, that's why we rebelled, and now we see that things can change for the better. That our situation can change. We want to change our situation from injustice to justice, from poverty to prosperity, from marginalization to participation. In effect, we want to change. Change is the purpose. It is a bottom line. In this end, and specific to the mining sector, I invite you to explore opportunities on mining to boost the economic development of the Bank Zamora. I hope that we do this with the lens of the four bottom lines that I have outlined. Profit, yes, but please include also the people, the planet, and yes, the purpose for all of this, which is change for the good. We in the government, of the Bangsamoro, New Bangsamoro, we consider 
that the next level of our struggle is not only good governance but moral governance that is our main advocacy corruption nepotism and manipulation and other ills of governance should be eradicated in closing we express our gratitude and thanks to the contribution of mining industry in the development of the bangsamoro region and at the same time urge everyone to please join us in our struggle our struggle for more moral governance thank you very much and wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, ladies and gentlemen i'm now opening up the floor for uh, q a um, please uh, i know there are probably a lot of questions coming in from the floor before you start your question kindly identify yourself and your affiliation and i now open the phone sir uh, you said a while ago that uh, a new law would be passed uh, well written up and passed uh, to govern the i guess the natural resources sector when 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 can we expect that law to come into place sir uh, as i have mentioned that we have already uh, we have initially uh, formed the audit team in the for the mining industry in our region after the report of the audit team then that will start the crafting of the law uh, and uh, the law crafted will be passed to our parliament and after it is passed to the parliament then it will be executed uh, by the bangsamoro uh, the government of the day of the bangsamoro so hopefully we can have the uh, uh, result of the audit team uh, within this uh, uh, month of uh, august and uh, by September, we will be discussing it in Parliament. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, do you, will you have a uh, separate DNR and Department of Energy uh, in BARM? The, the present Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao is uh, a ministerial form of governance. So, uh, this is one of the challenges we are facing now because we are still under a presidential unitary system uh, with, uh, uh, with, which may not be very compatible with the ministerial form of governance. But we have established different levels of intergovernmental relation uh, uh, religion, uh, relations uh, 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 agency. This inter uh, IGR, we call it IGR, will be defining the relationship between the ministries of the BARM and the departments of the national government. It will likewise define the relationship of the executive branch and the uh, the government of the day of the farm because in the ministerial form of government i know you you, you are well aware that uh, under a ministerial form of governance there is a fusion between the legislative and the executive branch unlike the unitary uh, presidential system where there is a uh, executive branch there is a legislative balance uh, there is a legislative uh, branch so in the case of our uh, ministerial form it is fused into one and uh, in the parliament uh, the executive are also members of the parliament many of the laws to be uh, to be crafted by the parliament will be laws uh, uh, sponsored by the government of the day so the mining law will be crafted 
by the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources and then it will be passed to Parliament for uh, deliberation. So that uh, the, the, it is not a separate uh, mini, uh, the, the ministry is part of the uh, part of the government and we are all still under the Philippine government. So but there is no direct link between the ministry and the departments uh, but there is the intergovernmental relation that will define and uh, their coordination mechanism. Sir, a while ago you talked about the Liguasan Marsh. When you say develop uh, the Liguasan Marsh, uh, which aspects of the Liguasan Marsh are you referring to? Well, uh, as far as the Liguasan Marsh is concerned, there are several uh, natural uh, resources in this area. Uh, in fact, uh, I think uh, about uh, five years ago, there was an exploration made uh, by Petronas of Malaysia. And uh, they, they, they dug uh, uh, 11 wells in the, around uh, uh, the Liguasan Mars. And uh, it turned out to be that nine of these wells reveals the presence of natural gas. So uh, other resources in the uh, in this Liguas and Mars also are uh, is still to be explored. But then, our uh, we in our discussion with the president last July then. Uh, we, I think uh, some of you have heard about his comment that uh, why we were, we are not still ex uh, doing something in the, for the Liguas and Mars. So we explained to him, uh, maybe he, he is not uh, he, uh, he has not uh, fully comprehend the 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 uh, provision in the BOL that we cannot also as far as. Uh, strategic minerals like natural gas, oil, and uh, other strategic minerals. We cannot explore it alone. We, we have to be a joint uh, effort by the national government and the uh, Bangsamoro government. So we need the authority of the, of the president in the form of executive order to give us the full authority to, to uh, we start the exploration and we can start after. Yes, sir. State your name and your affiliation. Hi, I'm uh, Ruel Rodriguez. I'm I, have, I wear so many hats. Um, I'm a consultant. Yeah, I think it's very crucial uh, for investor to boost co uh, investor confidence. Uh, I thought it's quite, uh, of course, uh, controversial, but how are we on in terms of uh, peace and order in the five provinces of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao? I think this is very critical uh, to uh, invite and, of course, uh, encourage and boost uh, investors uh, to, to the region. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, uh, we are all aware that uh, one of the conditions that uh, investors will come into the area, first foremost, would be consideration of peace and order. And admittedly, there are still some pocket of uh, uh, violence in the area. Uh, just lately, there was a bombing uh, claimed to be a suicide bombing in Hulu, uh, Sulu. And uh, you, you are all also all aware that uh, there are still sm small groups uh, not yet part of the uh, new government and the peace process. But then, if you also notice after the uh, conduct of the plebiscite, which is uh, which the, well, the, the result of which is a landslide uh, support from the entire population. It is the first time that the plebiscite was uh, uh, voted by more than 90% of the population of the area. So that 
uh, manifest the very strong support of the people in the uh, Bangsamoro government. And with the support of the Bangsamoro, we feel that gradually we can uh, 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 we can uh, uh, gradually uh, entice the other groups, the smaller groups, to uh, join uh, and uh, maybe uh, if uh, uh, well, because they, they they may be able to understand that if they if they will not join, then they will lose the support of the people and they will be isolated. So now we already feel some. Uh, uh, we we are now uh, starting the uh, decommissioning process. This is part of the normalization process, and uh, we will be starting the first decommissioning on the 7th of September. Uh, on our uh, uh, combatants, we will be involving around 12,000 of our combatants. And uh, we have received feelers from other groups, like the smaller groups, that they are interested to join this decommissioning process. So it, it is, uh, it, uh, it become attractive to them. So, the peace and order situation in the area may not be, uh, uh, may not be settled overnight. We have to do uh, a little more in order to address the peace and order situation. But then, uh, we observe that Incidents of violence have dropped very uh, 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 from the plebiscite up to now. The incidents of violence in the area uh, have dropped considerably, and we are looking forward that this will be uh, gradually addressed. We are also establishing a under the uh, normalization process. We are also establishing a joint peace and security teams. These joint and peace and security teams will be the main actor in preserving peace in the area, uh, sustaining and preserving peace. And this will be composed by a joint uh, forces from our Bangsamoro Islamic Armed Forces, the Philippine National Police, and the uh, AFP. Now there is an undergo an ongoing training already started. We will be initially establishing six thousand troops, three thousand from our uh, BIFF, uh, Bangsamoro Islamic Armed Forces, and three thousand combined from the AFP and of security that will help in maintaining peace and order in the area. Thank you. Chua from Cruz Marcelo and Tenefrancia. Um, sir, uh, will the Bangs or Autonomous Region impose its own nationality restrictions for mining activities and projects or will it just adopt the national, uh, the restrictions in the national law? Uh, while there is already an existing law as far as mining is concerned, which is applicable to, for now, still applicable to the region. But then we are allowed to craft our own law as long as it will not contradict the national law. So that's why, as, uh, as I have uh, mentioned, that we are now on the process of uh, crafting a uh, maybe more more relevant law laws that will govern mining in the region so that will come up uh, uh, maybe in one uh, two or three months now thank you so did i see another question from that side of the room yes sir Uh, good afternoon, sir. 
Uh, my name is uh, Carlo Ruiz. I am a geologist by profession. I would like to shed more light about the uh, Liguazan Marsh. Actually, the exploration and drilling by Petronas and PNOCCC, which I was a part of as a young geologist, started in 1989. So, basically, I was uh, consulted by a common friend, uh, Sir Ed Kabalu, and to look into the potential of uh, exp exploring the area. So he provided me with some uh, drilling information, particularly the uh, Sultan Sabarungi's uh, well one and two. And uh, the wells were not really drilled uh, quite deep to fully determine the extent of the resource. But definitely there is a gas resource at shallower depths which uh, were basically biogenic in nature or basically immature gas. So I advised him to acquire a service contract with the Department of Energy to further explore the area so that uh, it can be developed and uh, hopefully to be drilled for natural gas and probably oil. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as I have uh, related uh, before, uh, we have already discussed this with the President last July 10 and uh, we are waiting for the uh, official executive order that will come from his uh, office that uh, uh, fully authorizing the Bangsamoro uh, Autonomous Government in Muslim Mindanao to, uh, to trigger the exploration of the natural resources in the Liguasa Mars. So with that uh, executive order from the uh, president, it will give us uh, full authority to trigger the exploration. Thank you very much, sir. Unless there are other questions, we probably have time for one last one. Since there being none, sir, we'd like to bring this to a close and we'd like to thank you very much for your valuable time and for the information uh, about responsible natural resources development in Barn. Thank you. Don't go yet, sir. We will have a presentation of our token of appreciation. Uh, and I hereby close our session today and invite everyone to our network time uh, between now until and until we run out of beer. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. See you again on October 11. Turn this whole damn house into a nation. <laughs>